Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question, find winner of a tic-tac-toe game. Alright, so in this question we're going to be playing a tic-tac-toe game and the two players are going to be A and B on a 3x3 grid. So first they gave us the rules of tic-tac-toe. So real quickly, in the beginning we're going to have an empty board. Okay, so let's actually just draw it out. So this is what our 3x3 board is essentially going to look like. So we have a three by three, just like this, okay? So there's nine possibilities. And the way this is gonna kind of index is we're gonna have zero uh, column, first column and second column, zero row, first row and second row. So let's say if someone is putting a marker at a certain spot, then let's say they wanna put it over here. So we would go to the first row and the second column and we would put either a X or a O depending on the position, okay, cool. So now what do we have? So now the first player is always going to be A, and A always places the X character, while the second player is going to be B, who always places the O character. Okay, so X and O characters are always placed in empty squares, never on filled ones. So if something already exists at a certain spot, you cannot put an O over here or an X again. Okay, you can only put it at empty spots. Cool. So the game ends when there are three of on the same character filling in a row, column, or diagonal. Okay, the game also ends if all squares are not empty or there are no more moves that can be played uh, if the game is over. Okay, so the way you can win is there's actually eight ways. And these eight ways are actually pretty important. So let's just keep track of it. So the first possibility is if you have something like this, X, 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 they're all in the same row. Okay, so in this case, this is one possible way. So you could have that for the zeroth row, you could have that for the first row, and you could have that for the second row. So essentially, by row, you have three possibilities, okay? So let's say rows, and there's three possible ways to win by just the rows. Okay, now another possibility is the column. So you could have something like this. So in this case, there's again three possible ways by column. So you could have either the zeroth column, the first or the second column. Okay, so let's write that as well. So we have column, and this is going to be three possibilities. Now the final thing is diagonals. So we could have something like this, or we could have something like this, okay? So if I'm not wrong, this is the primary diagonal, and this is gonna be the secondary diagonal, right? So in this case, uh, we have two possible ways to win through diagonals, okay? So let's keep track of that as well. So this over here, how many? so how many possible ways do we actually have to win? So the possible ways we have to win are three plus three, six plus two, which is eight. Okay, so we have eight possible ways to win given this game. Okay, so now let's move on to the second part. And it says we're gonna be given an area called moves where each element is another area of size two corresponding to the row and column of the grid where they mark their respective character in the order in which A and B played. Now remember, A plays first, and then B, then A, B, and so on and so forth. So the goal here is to return the winner of the game. So if there is a winner, it's either gonna be A or B, and that's what we return. But there could be a condition where all of the squares or uh, places are filled, but there is no winner. So in that case, we have a draw. And another possibility is there are remaining spaces, but we did not finish the game yet, okay? So that means we return pending in that case. So you can assume that moves is valid and the grid is initially empty and A will always play first. So let's just see an example where these are the moves that we have. All right, so let's say we're given these moves over here and let's just see what the first naive kind of solution would be. So that would basically be to first populate this three by three grid and then perform three row checks three column checks and two diagonal checks, right? So let's just actually first do that real quickly. So first we'd have zero, zero. So remember X starts first always. Then we would go to two, zero. So two, zero, there would be O, one, one for X, and then two, one for O, and then finally two, two for X. So now in this case, first we perform three row checks. So row check, row check, row check. No one has one in this case. So we leave it as it is. Then we do three column checks. No one has one either. And finally we do, let's say we do this diagonal check first and then we do this. So finally at the last diagonal check, we found out that someone has one, we return A. Now, if at this point no one has one, it's either a tie or pending and that's how, and we need to figure that out. 
So another thing to do instead of doing this several times is we could do all eight of these at the exact same time. And instead of uh, populating this, we just look at the moves itself, okay? So let's see how we could actually do this. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to have two areas, one for A and one for B, okay? Now, both of them are going to be initialized with zeros, and there are going to be eight zeros, okay? So why eight? Okay, let me just do this real quick. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're going to have eight zeros for B as well. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. Now, what do these eight zeros represent? And in simple words, there are eight ways to win. And what we're essentially going to do with this array is to check if we have one with any one of those eight of those ways. Okay. So if we have one in a uh, one in any of these eight ways, that uh, player is a winner. Now, the way we're going to do this is like I said, we could do all three. So three plus three plus two of them, all of them separately, right? But instead, we want to kind of do them simultaneously. So this is where this area comes into play. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of consider these first three elements to check if we are, if we won a row. Okay. So this is going to be the first three elements. Okay. So this is going to check if we won in a row. Okay. And the second three elements checks if we won in a column. Okay. So this is the second three. And finally, the last two check for diagonal. Okay. Now, what exactly does this mean? So the idea here is very simple. So what we do is, what is the first move I did? So the first move I did over here, actually, let me just do it from scratch. I think that will be easier. So the first move I did was zero, zero, and that is going to be A's turn. So I put X over here, and I'm just drawing this for visualization purposes. So over here, what that means is I've placed a marker in the zeroth row and in the zeroth column and in this diagonal, okay? So when I place an X over here, it is important. So that could mean that I could possibly win in the zeroth row. I could possibly win in the zeroth column and the primary, uh, in the, and the primary diagonal over here. Okay. So that is exactly what we're going to do. So zero, so I'm going to account for this at all the places. So this refers to the zeroth, uh, row. This refers to the first row and this for the second row. Same way, zero column, first column, second column, and then we could do primary diagonal and then secondary diagonal. Okay. So now when X is here, that means I have an element at the zeroth row, which is X. Okay. Now the same way, uh, I, that also means I have an element at the zeroth column. So this increases by one. And that also means I have one element at a primary diagonal. Okay. So now it is B's turn. So B goes to two zero right over here. So now it's the same thing. So this is uh, important for the second column. Okay. So sorry, second row. So you, O could win at the second row. O could win. At, so this also corresponds to the zeroth row and the secondary diagonal. So we do the exact same steps. So we go to the, so in this case, we go to the second row and increase B's value by one. Okay. Saying that we have one marker in the, uh, in this row over here. Okay. So now the same way, uh, this is also at the zeroth column. So this would become one now. And finally, it is in the secondary diagonal. So this becomes one. Okay. So now we move on to two zero. So let's go through this a little bit faster. So at two zero, uh, sorry, at one one, sorry, my bad, uh, we would have X over here. So now we have one at the primary diagonal at this row and at this column. So we got to account for all three. So we now go to, so this is at the first column. This is at the first row as well. And we have another for the primary diagonal. So now it's saying we have two X elements in the primary diagonal. Now, if this becomes three, that means that we have one at the primary diagonal. In fact, if any of these values ends up becoming three, that marker or player has already won. Okay. So now let's just go on uh, for the last two. So we have two comma one. So two comma one would be an O over here. So this corresponds to this, this, and yeah, that's it. There's no diagonal in this case. So this would be the second row. So now we have two O's in the second row. Now, again, what does this mean? This means we, we're just one away from possibly winning for O at that row. So specifically at the second row. Now we also got to account for the first column. 
So this becomes 1 and that's it. Now finally, x ends up winning in this case. And what does x do? Uh, x plays 2, 2, so which is exactly over here. So 2, 2 comes at the second row, so we have 1x over here. At the second column, so there would be 1 over here as well. But now the most important thing is now it's part of the diagonal as well. So this, now we increase its value and it ends up becoming 3. So at this point, when it ends up becoming 3, that means we have 1. So when, like I said, when any of these becomes 3, that we have 1 in one of the possible 8 ways. So the only difference by using this method is instead of doing 3 row checks and 3 column checks and 2 diagonal checks, we're doing all 8 of them at the exact same time by just using an extra area. Now there's one small thing to do uh, which we might, so in this case we would end up returning A, okay? And if B won, we would return B. Now the last thing is if we go through all of the moves and there is no winner, and the way we know there's no winner is if we iterate through A and B and we don't actually end up returning anything, that means that we don't have a winner. So it could either be a tie or the game could be pending. The only way we actually know that is if the moves over here are equal to 9. So if the number of moves are equal to 9, that means that all of these are completely filled up. And that means it's a tie. So if moves is equal to 9, we're going to end up returning tie. But if that is not the case, that means that the game is still pending. And that's what we end up returning. Okay. So this is the solution and now let's just see what this looks like in code. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define our two areas, A and B. And these are going to be the zero areas with a length of eight, representing all the eight possible ways we could win. So now we have A and B. Now we got to iterate through our moves. So we're going to go by index. And the reason we're going to go by index is because every time we're at an even index, so zero, two, four, that means that the player A is winning. In other words, it is X's move, okay? And when that's not the case, when we're at an odd index, well, that means that it is uh, O's, uh, so player B's turn, or in other words, O is playing. Okay, cool. So now we need to get the two moves. So this is going to be in the format of row, comma, column. And the way we get this is we go to moves, we go to the index, and a row is going to be at the zeroth index and columns at the first index. Or well, we could just get it like this. Okay, so row, column, zero. Uh, row comma column is equal to moves index. Okay, so now we need to define what we're actually on. So who is actually playing right now? Is it A or B? And like I said, the way we do that is if index is uh, even. So if index mod 2 is equal to 0, then in that case, the player is going to be A. But if that's not the case, then player is going to be B. Cool. So now we know who the actual player is. So now we just got to populate this array over here. So we go to the player's array, that could be A or B. And the first thing we can do is we account for the row. So the way we do that is we go to the row itself, right? So that would either be the index 0, 1, or 2, and we add that by 1. Now the question is, how do we do this for our column, okay? So it's not this. So in simple words, let's just go back to drawing. So at the 0th index, so this is uh, the 0th row, first row and second row, cool. But now the columns are three away. So this is uh, at the third index, this is at the fourth index and fifth index. So in other words, the zeroth column is zero plus three, okay? The first column is one plus three. The second column is two plus three, okay? And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So the column number plus three, okay? So over there, we're gonna populate, uh, increase it by one. Okay, so now we took care of the row, and we got took care of the column. Now we got to take care of the diagonals. So the primary diagonal is very simple. And the reason it's primary is because, well, this is at the index 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. Okay. Now the way we actually do this for the secondary diagonal. Okay. Okay. So let's just implement this first. Okay. So the way we get that is if the row value is equal to the column value, then that means we are at a primary diagonal. So in that case, we go to the last but one index, okay? So we assign that, let's, so that's the sixth index, right? So at the sixth index, we're gonna increase its value by one. And another condition is if, it's, if it is at a secondary diagonal. And to actually get that is if the row value, so let's take an example. So it's uh, these three, right? So if the row, whatever the value is, is equal to two minus the column, then we're at a secondary diagonal, okay? So 0 
2. And 2 minus, uh, so, so the column here is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So it is part of the secondary uh, diagonal. So over here we have 1 and 1. So 1 is equal to 2 minus 1. And the same way, uh, so in this case we have 2 and 0. 2 is equal to 2 minus 0. Okay? So this is how we get the secondary diagonal. So if rho is equal to sorry, a 2 minus column. And in that case, that means that the secondary diagonal has a value. So that's just the last element, or in other words, the seventh index. So plus equals 1. Cool. So this considers all of them. So this does the row, this does the column, this does primary diagonal, this does secondary diagonal. Now we're done with this, okay? So all we have left to do is we have these two areas, and we got to iterate through these two areas to check if anyone has 1. Okay, so we could just do for i in range, and the range is going to be 8, but just to be specific, length of a, for example. And in this case, we go to, let's say first we go to a, we go to the index i, and check if it has a value of 3. Now, if it does, that means a has 1, and we return a, okay? But the other condition is if we go to the uh, array b at the index i, and if that is also equal to 3, then in that case, well, we're going to end up returning b. That means b has 1. Now, if none of these happen, we have two conditions, which is it could be a draw and or a tie. Sorry, uh, it could be a tie or a pendant. So if the length of moves is equal to 9, that means that it is a tie. So a draw, sorry. So we're going to end up returning draw. Okay, now if this is not the case, well, that means that the game is still pending. So we just do return pending. So let's submit our solution. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know if you have any questions.